Right, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your next act? Yeah. Would you kindly put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Miss Sally Fair! <laughs> Though you probably weren't expecting to see me. <laughs> I'm usually cage fighting on Sundays. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been banned. <laughs> Something to do with not understanding what no holds barred means. <laughs> so I've decided to try stand-up comedy. <laughs> I've got a lot of time on my hands since the Samaritans asked me to leave. <laughs> I did try adult education, but words cannot describe a humiliation that was life drawing for beginners. I know they say a bad workman blames his tools, but there are some images not even a 6B pencil can capture. <laughs> So, uh, so, my name's Sally and I'm married to Roger. He's an oxymoron. By that I mean he's too stupid to be allowed to breathe. <laughs> uh, for my birthday he bought me a gym membership. I was hoping for a widow's pension. <laughs> the other day I arrived at aerobics and there was a new lady standing in my space. So I shot her. <laughs> no, of course I didn't. I bided my time and when she was picking up her hand weights, I dropped some ketamine into her water. <laughs> Roger and I have both had all our jabs, but I prefer to keep my distance. <laughs> For example, I have my lunch, usually a tuna baguette and a chicken cup of soup, on a tray in front of the television so I can catch up on the latest episode of My Lover, My Killer. <laughs> if I want some light relief, there's always the Jeffrey Dahmer story. <laughs> Roger has his lunch on a tray in his study because he's still working from home. Sometimes I mess with his head by taking him coffee in a mug marked tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I always make sure to WhatsApp Roger before going upstairs just in case he's getting some light relief. <laughs> We don't want a repeat of the Ruby Wedding fiasco. <laughs> Roger also has an out himself most days when I go for my walk, uh, during which time he can uh, release his tensions. <laughs> now ladies, we know that men have needs, but we don't have to be there when they satisfy them. <laughs> Just like a lot of men, I suppose, he, he thinks about sex when he's doing other things. I think about other things. <laughs> when I'm doing sex with women. Indeed. He's not, he's not very romantic either. If I want my hand held, I have to go to the nail bar. <laughs> Sex with Roger. It's like, it's like going to the hairdresser. In the beginning, you're full of optimism. <laughs> thinking this time it will be different. <laughs> Halfway through, you realise you're not going to get the desired result. <laughs> And at the end, even though you're disappointed, you say, thank you. <laughs> that was lovely. <laughs> and they show you your rear view in the mirror. <laughs> and 
six weeks later, you have to do it all again. <laughs> you might think that Roger would be good at sex because he spends so much time practicing than I might. But sadly, that's not the case. All these years together, and he still needs a sat mouth to find my G spot. <laughs> So you can understand how upset I was when he said to me recently, you are so predictable. Why don't you ever surprise me? Dress up or something. So the next day, when he got back from his walk, I did surprise him. I was wearing his mother's clothes. <laughs> he, uh, he wasn't laughing. <laughs> I always thought he wanted me to be more like her, you see, but it didn't go down well. I think it was too soon after her funeral. <laughs> if I'd known Roger had a weak heart, I'd have done that ages ago. <laughs> anyway, the ambulance men were amazing. I take my hat off to them. It was Roger's mother's hat. <laughs> that reminds me, years ago, when our son Johnny was little, Roger refused to take me out to lunch on Mother's Day because he said I wasn't his mother. So this year on Father's Day, I told him, you're not Johnny's father. <laughs> Some of you might think that was unkind um, or even cruel, but Roger had been doing a number of things that really irritated me, like um, waking up. <laughs> Having said that, when he's asleep, his snoring keeps me awake. I, I was thinking about buying an anti-snore pillow, but then I realised any pillow's anti-snore. <laughs> if you put it over someone's house. <laughs> a few days ago, I had a surprise. I was in the supermarket and I needed the loo. And you know what? They've got a condom machine in the ladies at Tesco. I know you're surprised. You thought I shopped at Waitrose, didn't you? <laughs> As I was leaving Tesco, I was approached by a homeless man who said, any change? I had to tell him, Sorry, no, my husband's still useless in bed. <laughs> anyway, I think it's time I went. When I was on my way out this evening, in the hall, I tripped and fell over Roger's shoes, and he stuck his head out of the living room door, and he said, Careful! So I shot him. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been Sally Fair. Thank you. <laughs> comedy circuit that the pair of us can look each other in the eye. We're, we're, the only, we're the only people our size. It's absolutely brilliant.